And this is Ken Kratzer for Sons of the American Legion Radio. And uh, we're covering Army football. Uh, goes year-round. And uh, we have a chance, as we like to do, catch up with uh, graduates of West Point, former Army football players, hear how they're doing. And we have a chance tonight to talk with Julian Crockett, who is a graduate of West Point, played four years on the football team. Julian, you were class of 14, is that correct? Correct, yes. That's right. And uh, uh, we want to first just start off by uh, just uh, uh, offering condolences on the loss of your brother and other player, uh, Jordan. Uh, he was a captain in the Army. Uh, he'd gone through the Sapper program. He was in the Engineers program, and he, he, saw, he, he uh, sadly died in, uh, while he was in a, a, a training. Um, and our condolences, I know that was just over two years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, we remember, uh, you know, what it must have been like for you to play with your brother football at West Point. That must have been a great experience for you. Yeah, it was definitely a great experience. I remember in high school, we both wanted to go our separate ways and go go to other um, other universities. And my parents were like, no, you guys have to go to the same school. So thankfully enough, they were they had the foresight to, to know that that would be a, a good experience for us. But I mean, honestly, if it wasn't for him and it wasn't for the football team, I'm not sure if I would have made it through West Point. So um, just truly a blessing. Well, absolutely. Our, our condolences and uh, our support to your family. And uh, just reading some of the messages, there were uh, there are so many nice messages uh, about Jordan uh, online uh, to read. He was so so very well thought of. Now, why, why don't we talk a little bit about uh, – we, we, tell us a little bit about your – uh, what it was like to go into the Army Commission and uh, and some of the stops along the way for you in, in the Army. So, yeah, I mean, going going into the Army, um, I was a field artillery officer, so obviously I had to go to the schoolhouse in Oklahoma, and um, that was a, a good, that was an intense, you know, six months for everybody. They said that uh, field artillery would be a, a, a relatively chill time. Um, that, that first six months uh, in Bullock was not easy. We were all struggling. But once I got out into the, uh, into the, to the real army, if you will, um, to the big army, um, I went over to Tacoma and I was at Fort Lewis and I was with uh, 5-3 FA and really enjoyed my time out there uh, with the High Mars unit. Um, deployed out there, deployed and went to um, Jordan and UAE where I was a platoon leader and, and got to do a little bit of EXO time out there and came back and then I went for civil affairs and at that time uh, made made it through the civil affairs selection and, and was getting ready to go to uh, start airborne school and, and I, something just happened and clicked in me and said you know I don't think I want to do this for the next commitment that was what it was it was you know once you do civil affairs you're committed for another three or so years so at that point I was like I think I think I want to do something else while I was on deployment. You know, I, I really enjoyed playing soccer and, and, you know, I really found that love for sport. And I, and I, uh, I think I, I, I thought that was, that was what I wanted to do, you know, either, either be in sport or sport product. So uh, when I actually came back from deployment, I went to the university of Oregon and did a um, not an internship. I did a, a little class there uh, in their sport product management um, program and and really enjoy it was like a week-long course and really enjoyed that so um so then so yeah I decided that at that point I was just going to go back to captain's career course and and then get out from my next duty station and that's essentially what I did went to El Paso and um was at Devardi over there for for a year was able to do three month a three-month internship with the local USL soccer team the El Paso locomotive really enjoyed enjoyed being in, in that organization and working in their marketing department. Um, and then once I got out, COVID happened. So they weren't able to offer me a position or anything like that. So I moved back to Tampa and started looking at opportunities to get into sport here. Um, and luckily enough, I was able to get into the, the Vinick Sport and Entertainment Management Program at the Muma School of Business at U University of South Florida. So that's where I'm at right now. Well, that's great. I, I visited the University of South Florida one time, and uh, it's, a, it's a very uh, uh, fast-growing school. Tell us a little bit about um, what what the courses are like that you take in sports management. Uh, you're in, I understand, it's part of an MBA program. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
So, uh, so far this semester, we're doing, uh, we're getting into sport marketing. Uh, we have a, a sport business law class, uh, sport and everything's going to have sport, but uh, data analytics um, what else? We also have a global environment of sport business class, which we have people come in and talk to us from different parts of the localities in, in the world and just talk to us about how sport is different, you know, um, which has been really a really good class. And I'm really enjoying that. And then the semester prior, we, we did a public speaking. We did a, a bit of psychology. We did... Um, what were some other, we, uh, we did some, we did some, some, some other courses. We'll also do a data analytics, another data analytics course in this, in okay. this um, semester as well. So really enjoying all of the classes um, and, and really, and I'm also doing an internship. A big part of it too, is that they like to, to get, get us a lot of hands-on, hands-on experiences. So every pretty, pretty much seems like every week they're sending us opportunities for us to, to work an event or, or, um, do ha or interview for an internship or something like that. So I really enjoy the program. Well, certainly they have the uh, big game in Tampa uh, exactly. next week with the Super Bowl, and it won't be kind of like a normal year with all of the festivities around it, but still uh, a huge event. And, uh, and, uh, you have uh, a, an organization called the New York Yankees in uh, Tampa, too. Mm -hmm. uh, we do some work with them. And uh, um, that is me. Now, tell us a little bit about uh, how is it for you uh, leaving the Army? And you said you took courses at the University of Oregon. And, uh, and then you went down to El Paso. How is it for you to leave the structure of the Army from where you went to uh, college and then uh, going into five years of service. What was it like uh, to uh, uh, start to look at the civilian sector again? Honestly, I was just talking to a classmate, a football player friend of mine, uh, Patrick Laird, this earlier today. And, and we were talking about how it's, it's super, it's so intimidating to, to be, have this freedom to do whatever we want um, now that we're not in the army and we can, you know, grow out our beards and, you know, grow out our hair and do go wherever and do whatever. Um, that's super intimidating. That freedom is, is, is wildly intimidating, but I have, luckily I have the focus of knowing that I want to get into sport. So I, I've been able to sort of shape my future that way, um, which is, which has been great, but, you know, creating a schedule so that I'm productive, um, follow, you know, following through since there's nobody checking up on me, all of those things, they still follow carry through from, from my military experience, but you know, it's, it's definitely more um, challenging for me to do that um, and keep track of myself. But, you know, it's, it's been, it's been a, a challenge, but it's, it's also definitely been good. And I see, you know, looking at myself and where I'm at versus some of my classmates that the military was by far a, such a developmental and, and a great experience and has set me up for success that, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't, um, I, I miss it. I, I'm, I'm not gonna say I miss it, but you know, I, I definitely, I definitely think it, it, it was something that I, I would, I, I needed, so. When you say you learned a lot in the military, certainly at West Point, uh, you learned so many leadership skills, so many organizational skills. I see it every, every day with the cadets there and the players. And what you learn in the military leading, uh, uh, going on a deployment, uh, all of that's involved there. What did you learn from the military that you find is you're carrying over now that you're moving into a, a civilian career? Yeah, I mean, big thing is just the leadership experience, just having led, you know, teams and, and organizations before. Uh, a lot, I mean, a lot of my classmates, they've, they've been able to do internships and, and lead and, and work and have ex work experience, but like actually leading, you know, 100, you know, 20, 100, 30, however many people, that's something that I definitely had underestimated getting out. But I see that being so valuable as I move forward. So definitely that piece. Because certainly I find in the civilian world, you don't lead, it's very, lead large organizations like you do in the military. And certainly you did that at a young age, right. uh, leading an army uh, uh, organization. And that must have been uh, something for you. 
when you talk about sports, I and I taught sports sports marketing a few years ago. Uh, we we saw sports teams being leaders in digital marketing. Uh, we saw it. I used to say, well, let's go look at Ohio State's webpage and see how sophisticated that is, and uh, and uh, uh, what colleges do uh, to uh, try to promote themselves. And you know, we used to look at the Yankees' Facebook page, and it would have seven million followers on it. What do you find about, uh, do you find uh, in, that in studying sports at digital market, there's uh, kind of some leadership in digital marketing? Definitely. I definitely think that there, there's some leadership. Um, I mean, that's, that's the, the whole thing is we're, we're actually doing a, a, a marketing project, our first marketing project now. And I'm, and I'm now having, trying to, to lead my team through it, but, you know, missing that sort of experience uh, piece of, of the actual marketing um, the marketing experience is, is, is tough because I, I, I know how to lead and drive a, a meeting, but I don't necessarily know the, the, the functions and the way that marketing should, you know, that process. So that's tough. But, you know, um, once, once you get down that down, I, I, I feel like that's, that's just that it'll be, it'll be easy plug and play. But I see one of the things that they preach in, in the program is that we try to be cutting edge with technology. So, you know, we see TikTok being something that's cutting edge and that, you know, trying to be early adopters to that. So they're pushing us to try to do TikTok and, and try to do that well. Um, but also one of the things that we're, we're, us as students have to understand too, is that organizations have varying levels of, of bandwidth to actually do these things. So they may want to get into TikTok and want to get into uh, Snapchat and all of these different platforms, but can they do it with the people that they have? And if they can do it, can they do it well? So all these things that have to do with, with management and, and being cutting edge, you know, I see them coming together and it's, 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 it's interesting because it's, it's something new for me. So yeah. I really enjoy now, that. Now, Julian uh, Crockett, we're having a chance to chat from a class of 14 and Julian, what part of the sports business, what area would you like to get into? Do you, do you think? You know, I, I came in saying that I wanted to do marketing, and, but as I see more, there's, you know, there's so, so many different facets. There's sales, there's corporate partnerships, there's the data analytics that, that I think is going to continue to be, be a huge piece and, and going to continue to grow. So at this point, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm still saying marketing is my number one, but I'm also, you know, I'm a free agent, so I'm, I'm open to anything. Absolutely. Now, Julian, we got to ask you a few questions about your playing days at West Point. Okay. Uh, when you when you came in in 2010, Army had a, had a really good season. Went to a bowl game. Uh, I remember you. Were, the team was winning all of its road games that year. They they won at Tulane, and uh, uh, had a big night at Yankee Stadium against Notre Dame. So, also take us through a few some of the highlights uh, from your uh, playing career. Uh, you are a uh, best your highlight was really as a kick returner right right I, I actually think my my best return came on the first kick return that I had I want to say against Boston College which was a, a big upset win that I think the 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 core cadets stormed the field because <laughs> we hadn't won too many games prior to that um I remember that game I was <laughs> yeah. trying Steelman had a big run for a touchdown late mm-hmm and I think there's a great picture of me and my brother actually run, storm in the field together, him in, in his cadet uniform and me um, in uniform. So it's, it's, it's such a, a great, you know, picture just, you know, to see the dichotomy of, you know, core and, and football merge together. And uh, it was just, it was amazing. That was, that was definitely one of my, one of my greatest uh, feelings. Also beating Air Force that same year. Um, you know, that was huge. All, all of the Army Navy games, uh, I remember our first year, you know, we had the great, the great uniforms that paid homage to our dress gray with, with the sash for the seniors. Um, you know, I came out for warmups and had my, you know, shirt tucked in, our jersey tucked in so that my midriff was showing and then it starts to snow and, and uh, that game just went, went all downhill from, from the beginning. But I just, you know, all of those, Army Navy moments was something that you know you you don't forget. So, absolutely. What is it like for you uh, watching uh, the team in the Jeff Munkin era? 
uh, that it took a couple of years to put together, but then they turned turned the corner. I always remember watching the the first game of the year in 2016 against Temple. Temple didn't know what got what they got hit by. Game mm-hmm. was over in the middle of, of the fourth quarter when they thought they were going to have an easy win, and it just went on from there. Uh, what was it like watching uh, Jeff Munkin um, and his coaches uh, really transform the team and the program? Honestly. Honestly, it's a lot of jealousy. You know, I, 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 I watch them play and I'm just like, man, they, they really have this, um, this grit about them that I'm not sure why we didn't have it or, or what, it, what, it, what it is, what, what they're doing now. Um, but they just have this grit about them where if it's a close game, you know, I'll bet on them to, to win it close. Whereas for us, it, we, we, had, we played so many teams, teams close but whenever it came down to, to that final kick or, you know, that final drive, we just, you know, we just didn't get it done. And they just have totally turned that, turned that around. And I think it's, it, it's probably that they're doing a whole bunch of competing from what I see on the social media. And, and, and when I talk to my, my teammates that have worked with the, uh, with the coaching staff, you know, I think they just compete in, in practice a lot more than, than what we did. Um, which, you know, credit to Coach Munkin for, for changing that culture because, you know, anytime we can, we can get a streak and get some wins for Army-Navy and win some bowl games, you know, just, just get, keeps everybody excited. So, you know, I'm just jealous every time I watch them play, to be honest. Well, you had some good wins. You know, I, I remember quite uh, the Northwest, the time Northwestern came in and uh, you guys beat them, uh, you know, coming in from the Big Ten. Um, and you, you always seemed like you played about two touchdowns better at home. Remember it was a nice win you had against Tulane. You were talking about the win against Boston College and the win against Air Force. Uh, um, you, you really had your moments, and you really seemed to play well at home. And I, I really enjoyed uh, – I remember the one moment against Northwestern, I remember watching Will Wilson, who was a center, uh, stand up and uh, just kind of look at the Northwestern defensive line. It's like, who am I going to – who am I going to take out on this play? And right. he had a lot of confidence, and uh, and uh, you know, you really had some some uh, great moments. Now, who who are some of the teammates that you keep up with, uh, or you're able to to uh, hear from? Oh, um, Anthony Stevens. He, me, and him went to you know Tacoma to El Paso together. So you know, he's been he's been my road dog to be honest. Him, Reggie Nesbit. Um, Patrick Laird, Momo Kime, um, you know, so many, so many people have actually, John Crusetti, I talked to him recently, um, Scotty Williams. I, I try to keep up with, with, with as many people as, as possible, even if it's just like a little text and, you know, just checking yeah. up. So, well, you know, I, John Crusetti uh, was a very good baseball player and we used mm-hmm. to watch some of his baseball games. And I, I remember doing an interview with him after a game against Maris. What, what is he doing now? He's up in Alaska, and I want to say he's uh, with the, the Ranger unit out there. Okay. So, now he was yeah. a, a very good football player and, and also a very good baseball player. And uh, um, so, Julian, when you look at, think about your years at West Point, uh, what, what do you think about? Um, you know, I, I, it's such a tough 47-month grind for everybody. We see that. It's 24, you know, 24-7 environment. Uh, but, um, you know, you learn how to handle a lot of things, you know, and, you know, uh, they say well, army officers need to be able to be able to do 400 things a day. And I think they teach you that at West Point pretty well. Well, what do you, what did you, what are your memories? what did you take away again that, uh, you really value? Well, it all seems like a blur to be honest. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, uh, I think it's, a, it's a great place to be from and it's, it's terrible when you're there, you know, you, you've always got something to do, somewhere to be, uh, really had to walk a mile up uphill in the snow to, to if you want to drive your car when you're, you know, when, when you've got those privileges. So, you know, it really, it's, a, it's really a pressure cooker. It really tests you. But I think that's, I needed that. Um, and I, I wouldn't trade it, wouldn't trade the experience. Wouldn't necessarily want to do it again, but I wouldn't trade it. Um, I wish I was, you know, could be there with, with all of my teammates and all of all of the, the, the guys that I've met in the army and, and could go down to the first D and just, you know, have a, a, on a Thursday spirit dinner and just, you know, just hang out with those, with those guys and girls again. So, 
you know, I really just the camaraderie is something that you definitely you don't get and you, you, you miss it once you once you go away. But definitely that. You can only imagine, but we, we uh, realize it's, it's so good to be able to watch everyone at West Point uh, grow. Uh, you know, I, I think of someone like Sandy McCoy, uh, the senior fullback this year. We, we knew him, watched him from the time he was a freshman. And you could see his confidence grow and uh, the leadership he projected this past year. And I uh, say that about uh, so many others. Well, Julian uh, uh, Crockett, great to talk with you tonight. Is there a final thought you have for uh, the West Point audience and, uh, and uh, uh, the fans out there? You know, um, for anybody that's transitioning, I would just say, like, make sure that you have a plan. Make sure that you have a, a guiding principle, guiding light. Know what you want to do um, and, then go, and then go for it and then just go full force at it. And, and leverage your, your network, make sure that you reach out because there's so many people out that will help you. You just kind of got to make a little noise and, and let people know how they can help you. Um, besides that, I just want to say, you know, go Army, beat Navy. <laughs> okay. Hey, Julian, uh, great to catch up with you tonight. We've been trying to do this for a while. And uh, really best wishes finishing your MBA studies at the University of South Florida. And uh, we'll look forward to following your career. Uh, in business, perhaps in uh, pro or college sports. And great to talk with you tonight. Thank you. Great to talk to you too. Thank you, Julian. This is Ken Kratzer for Sons of the American Legion Radio. And we are covering Army football. We represent the 2 million veterans uh, of the American Legion, 350,000 members of the Sons of the American Legion Radio. Great to talk with Julian. Our best wishes. And this is Ken Kratzer for Sons of the American Legion Radio from White Plains, New York.